Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church on this Lord's Day. We appreciate your presence. We welcome every one of you. We welcome you visitors. We're glad you're here. May the Lord bless you. And you that's listening out in the radio listen audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. And this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we'll be a blessing to you in the singing as well in the preaching of God's Word. You in the radio listen audience, if you know of a shut-in, someone that might be at home today that'd like to get in on the worship hour through medium of radio, why don't you get on your phone and call them and have them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour. You'll be doing them a favor. I will appreciate it so very much. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 15. It's page 1096 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. And while you're turning to this page number or to this place in your Bible, bear with me as I make an announcement or two. If you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you're tuned to the station where you're now listening, you can get the daily broadcast each day at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday. And then if you don't have the beautiful calendar we're sending out, you can write in and get the calendar. It's I am the light of the world calendar. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You find that on the calendar. It's very beautiful. It's in color. We like for you to have one in your home or your place of business or wherever it can be used. And write in and just say, Preach Edward, send me the calendar. Now at this particular time of the year, we have people that think about us in regard to sending us Christmas cards. And we appreciate them so very much. It lets us know you're thinking about us at this time of the year. But the reason I'm saying that is for this purpose, save writing a letter and sending a Christmas card, you can request the calendar in your Christmas card. We'd be glad to get it in the mail to you. Then I want you in the auditorium and you in the radio listen audience that heard me make this and I said, please bear with me because I feel that we might have several today that's not been getting our Sunday broadcast or our daily broadcast that doesn't know about our proposed Holy Land tour. We plan to make another tour to the Holy Land, the Lord willing, in March of next year. We plan to go to Jordan and then into Israel, visit the garden tomb in Mount Calvary take a ride on the Sea of Galilee, go to the upper room and visit Lazarus' tomb, visit the Dead Sea, plan to go to Masada and also Petra. And then after leaving Jordan, we plan to go into Athens, Greece, visit Mars Hill and other places there in Greece. This is a wonderful, wonderful trip. And if you're listening today and you don't know about it, why don't you write in and get one of our brochures? If you're on the borderline, you're not quite made up your mind as to whether you want to take this trip or not, write in and get a brochure. Maybe some of you people can send your parents, some of you young adults, maybe you can send your pastor or your pastor and his wife. Maybe you could go with a friend or send a friend and write in and get a brochure. You might change your mind about it if you're not thinking about going too strongly. You can request the brochure also in your letter or your Christmas card. And we get it in the mail to you. Now, this is my mailing address. Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now, today, I'm going to speak on this subject. Now, this is a song I used to hear people sing when I was a boy growing up. The song was entitled, Where Is My Wandering Boy Tonight? I'm going to use that for a subject. I might say, where is my wandering boy today? Now, people today know more about where their dogs are and their cattle. They know more about where old Tom the cat is than they know about where their children are. Be a lot of people tonight can tell you exactly where to find old Butch and Fido. They can tell you where to find old Tom and they know about where the chickens are. And, but they can't tell you where to find their children. Where is my wandering boy tonight? We're living in a day of disobedience. We're living in a day when our youth, when our young people are killing themselves on the highways. 
In the past week or so, there have been three or four young boys around 20 years old that's killed themselves on the highways or because of drugs or because of alcohol. It was said on the news this morning there'll be one out of every 10 driving the highways in the next two or three weeks drunk. One out of every 10 car you meet to see on the highway between now and after the first year, you're going to have one drunk driver in one of those automobiles. I mean drunk. I'm not talking about just taking a little dram. I'm talking about drunk. There'll be many of them drinking, but at least one out of ten to be drunk. He's a potential murderer. He's liable to kill you. He's liable to kill you or your family. And he could care less because he knows better than to get drunk and drive. And he knows you don't have any judicial system in this country, no criminal judicial system. It's rotten. It stinks to high heaven. And all these criminals and potential murderers and drunkards know this. They know they can kill two or three, four or five and be nothing done about it. They won't be punished. And they know that. And this wicked, ungodly, anti-Bible, anti-Christ, uh, anti-Americanism, ACLU organization today, pro-crime, they are working to turn criminals loose and keep criminals out of the electric chair. And the liberal judges and the liberal appeal courts and the liberal politicians are also working against the real, true, red-blooded American today. They could care less how many innocent people to kill as long as you don't, don't harm that criminal. Don't put him in the electric chair where he ought to be. Don't, don't to punish him. Let him go free. See, we're all warped in this country today. And these, this liberal organization I mentioned and the liberal judges and appeal courts and lawyers, many of them are so crooked they have to screw their britches on when they get up every morning. And they make their money out of, out of the criminals and they know that and they don't care about innocent law-abiding citizens as far as being killed or robbed or murder or rape is concerned. That doesn't bother them. They're worried to death about that criminal. Don't put that man to death because he may get out and if you keep him out of the electric chair, he might kill somebody else and we can get the case and have something to work on. And after all, you know, the taxpayers need a place to place some money to feed him and cost about $20,000 a year to keep him up. Don't, don't put him in the electric chair. Now, God said do it, but don't do it. Amen. See, that's Satan speaking through those liberals and infidels. And your life is jeopardized on the highway every time you get an automobile. When you walk down the streets, when you go in and out business places, many of these criminals and robbers and thieves and dope addicts and drunkards, until you need to be careful. You need to be careful because... The liberal, rotten judicial system in America has created this situation. And the law-abiding citizen today that loves God and loves the Bible, loves his family, is going to have to be extra careful and you're going to have to protect yourself. You don't have much protection today, but you're going to have to protect yourself outside of your own protection. You better believe that. Jesus said on one occasion, he said, do you have a sword? They say, he said, if you don't have one, say you couldn't get you one. Because every time when you need a sword, it's right now. If you don't have a sword, you better buy you one. Because robbers are turned loose, murderers are turned loose, criminals are turned loose, drunks are turned loose, dope addicts are turned loose in this land. And you better protect yourself and your family. If you don't, you allow to be robbed or killed or raped or whatnot. And uh, before you realize what's really taking place. Now we're in that situation today and... And the liberals and the infidels, the atheists and the ungodly have got us in that predicament. And they're responsible. They'll face God for it in the day of judgment. Now, whether you like what I'm saying or not, that's beside the point. I, I could care less. Yeah. Does it bother me half as much as the wind? And pass it on to you like I would like to. I really don't have the time. And by the way, this message and the singing today will be on cassette tape. And they are available if you want to write in and send in your contribution and get a tape, just do so. Say, Brother Edward, send me the tape that you taped on a certain date. Uh, today, I believe, is what, the 11th? Is today the 11th? May or whatever. Well, anyway, just say, Preacher, send me your Sunday's tape. And we'll get it in the mail to you in appreciation for your support to help take care of the expense of radio time. Now, Jesus here is vindicating his act of associating with sinners they criticized him because he associated with sinners, the, the Pharisees and, and of course the um, scribes and others uh, criticized him because he associated with sinners. He's vindicating that in these uh, stories in this one parable in three parts. 
Verse 1 of chapter 15. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Now the Bible says he came to seek and to save the lost, and they that are holy, not a physician. That's what he come for. Verse 3, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he has found it, he layeth on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends, his neighbors, said unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, even more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Then verse 8, Either what woman having ten pieces of service shall lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she's found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece where I had lost, or which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now he doesn't stop there. He goes on. He gives you another phase of the parable. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And divideth unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country that wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hide servants of my fathers have bread enough in despair? I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I'll sin against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hide servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I'll sin against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead as alive again, he was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now that's reading from Luke chapter 15, the first 24 verses. Where is my wandering boy today, or where is my wandering boy tonight? Let's use that for a subject. Now here we have the Trinity at work. We have the shepherd's toil. We have the spirit's search. And we have the Father's heart of welcome to the sinner. There you have the Trinity represented in this parable. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Not only do you have the Trinity here represented, but you have a threefold condition of a sinner. You have the sheep here lost, unable to find his way. You have a coin lost, which betrays the solemn fact the sinner is spiritually dead. You have a son in a faraway country alienated from God and wayward at heart. So you have a picture of a sinner in all three phases of this parable that I mentioned as well as phase number four pertaining to the elder brother. Now we have people today that use this in preaching and teaching as a backslider. They portray the prodigal son as a boy that's been saved and gotten away from God out of fellowship and came back home. And that makes for good preaching and teaching all right. If you want to use that some way symbolically, but it really means uh, that it depicts a lost sinner. All three phases of this parable I read in your hearing is a picture of a lost sinner. Now that boy came back home and he said he was dead and he's alive again. That's what the father said. And it pictures a man at creation. He said, give me, give me the goods that belong to me. And every man has the goods of his soul. God has given man a soul. But man has wandered away from God in a faraway land, alienated from God, like the lost corn, dead in trespassing sins, like the lost sheep up on the mountain without help. And that's a picture of that sinner. 
But when he comes to God, like the boy coming back home, he gets life, he's made alive, he was dead and now he's alive. That's exactly what the sinner gets when he comes to Jesus Christ. Now if you notice here, the son leaves home in verse 13. He's given his potion. That is, he has a soul and natural talent and ability. Now sinners have that today. There's a lot of sinners today that have a talent and ability. If they would get saved, could be used in a marvelous way to the glory of God. But cannot be used for God until they get saved. A lot of these singers today, so-called gospel singers, jump from one foot to another. They'll sing uh, in the church for a while in gospel songs, and then they'll go out and take up the worldly side and, and sing worldly songs, proving they knew nothing about God to start with. And therefore, they had talent, but instead of getting saved and let God use it, they go to the world. And they use it for a worldly pleasure and fame and wealth and to entertain the sinners out in the world. Now there's a lot of sinners today have natural ability, good personalities. If you were to get saved and let God have that talent and use it, you can do wonders for God. Now this boy had his soul, he had natural talent, he had money, and he left home. He went out into the world like every sinner today without God. And then the Bible said when he began to be in one in verse 14, he spent all he had. He come to the end of himself. He realized he had to have some help. He had spent all and he sets out to join something to help himself in the world. Now you have sinners today. They'll do that. They'll join everything that, that comes along in order to get satisfaction. They'll join all kind of clubs and lodges, the moose, the goose, the ganders, and, and all the rest of them. And trying to find something to satisfy their souls and minds. But that doesn't satisfy. There's people right now clinging to some kind of affiliation with some worldly system, religion, organization. And they know their heart is as empty as last year's bird's nest. They know they do not have God in their hearts. And yet they're affiliated with some uh, order, secret order, or some kind of club. A fraternity they know that uh, they're associated with that and got just enough religion in it to make them religious and the lost and on the road to hell. Now there's nothing in the world that's going to satisfy your heart until you get Jesus in there. Now this young boy, he started out joining something. And according to the Bible, he joined the swine's club. The Bible said in verse 15, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him out in the field to feed swine. That was repulsive to this young Jew. Because they were taught to despise swine and hate swine. And can you imagine here is a boy that had a good home and left it. And no doubt his mother and dad many a night said, where is my wandering boy tonight? And he had that good home and he went down into the country spent his money and route his living, had a lot of friends as long as he had money, and when his money gave out, his friends gave out, he had none. And so he sets out to join something. There's a vacancy. There's a hunger. There's a longing in his heart that needs to be filled. And he goes to a citizen of that country, evidently a Gentile. And a Gentile is a type of a whirly, or whirling, a whirly person. And he goes to that Gentile, and he gets a job. He says, I need a job. And the man said, I'll tell you what. I have an opening out here at the hog pen. And I want you to go out here and feed the hogs. You take care of them. Just give them the slop or the food or whatever they eat. And clean out the hog pen. And just stay out there with the hogs. Can you imagine how that you felt out there with those hogs? And you have low sinners today walking around in the muck and the mire of this world. Out at the hog pen of time, feeding upon the husk of the world, when they could be in the family of God, enjoying the blessings of God. Some people right now, no doubt, listen to me. You got the headache, and the why you have the reason you have it. You drunk too much liquor, or beer last night, and your head's about to burst. Well, that's a shame. Why don't you get right with God and get saved before you wake up in a drunkard's hell? The Bible said no drunkard's going to heaven you got to get saved. And after you get saved, you won't be a drunkard. You'll be a child of God. And some of you right now in trouble because of weakness and evil doings. And you're wondering how in the world can I get out of the mess I'm in? Well, 
The devil got you into it, and I guarantee it's not going to help you out of it. So you'll have to look to God for help, and if you'll get rid of your hellish pride, repent of your sins, and get right with God, God might help you out of the mess you're in. You have a lot of backsliders today, and some that's never slid forward. They are not willing to accept the responsibility of serving God. There's too much cost to it, and they want to go to heaven when they die and have God to smile upon them. And everything to be blessed on this earth. And then treat God like God was uh, some tramp. Or maybe God did nothing to pay for sin. Or had not blessed him in any manner. That's a shame. And it should not be that way. Now this boy here seeks to join something. And he, verse 15, he went out and joined the swine. Join the hogs if you please. And I can overemphasize this as some people right today that got under conviction, they knew they needed God, and there's nothing in a greater no institution on this earth other than the home that's any greater than the local church, the church of the living God. And you have people today that got under conviction and they knew they needed God, they needed something. And they went out and joined some kind of fraternity or some kind of club or some kind of lodge to try to satisfy their minds and begin to feed upon the affairs of this world. But they know deep down in their heart they are not satisfied. That will never satisfy. I know a man one time, he got under conviction. A friend of his became a minister and he went to hear this minister and this man was a businessman here in Athens. And he went to hear this minister. And he got under conviction. And he went to the city chaplain, some old apostate. And told the city chaplain uh, that he needed something. He went to hear this minister and he's disturbed about it. And you know what the chaplain told him to do? He said, you go join the Masonic Lodge. And when you join the Masonic Lodge, that will satisfy your heart. Well, he was a businessman. He went and joined the Masonic Lodge. And they just religious enough to send you to hell. And he joined the Masonic Lodge. And that conviction left him. And as far as I know, he's still a lost man on the road to hell and killed that conviction by joining an organization just enough to kill the conviction and still lost. And on the road to hell, probably never be saved. Now, beloved, you listen to me. There's no club, no fraternity, no lodge. There's nothing. There's no organization on this earth that can take the place of the Spirit of God in your heart that comes in there to satisfy your soul and get you right with God. You enjoy every last one of them. The moose, the goose, the ganders, the turkey buzzards, and all of them. Yeah. And die and go straight to hell as a martin to his God. Now, you better listen to this Baptist preacher whether you like it or not. Don't you turn that radio off. You listen to me. God's going to hold you responsible for what I'm saying. And you may face God before the sun goes down tonight. Who knows? It's a dangerous thing to fight against conviction and not do what you know you're supposed to do. God Almighty is speaking to your heart. Get out on your knees. Get right with God. You know this preacher is telling you the truth. I take this Bible and prove to you what I'm saying is true. And I'm giving you what thus saith the Lord God and telling you what you need to do. You need to get right with God. Joining something is not going to get you to heaven, not even the church. Now, if you could join the church and go to heaven, I'm talking about the local assembly. That would sound good, but that's not God's way. I believe in joining the local church after you're saved. I know we have a lot of sinners that, that's joined our churches, and that's why you can't get them to the house of God. That's why they put up every excuse under heaven for not being in the house of God. They're just sinners that's joined the church unsaved on the road to hell without God. And you have to pump them and pump them and pull and pull and then pull them in and then go back, pump and pump and pull and pull again to get them back to the house of God. What people like that need is a good case of old time Holy Ghost salvation. And if they ever get saved, you won't have to pull and drag and beg and plead and persuade to get them to the house of God, they'll want to come. Because the Spirit of God will put something on the inside of them to give them that want to, and they'll want to come to the house of God. There may be times when they're disabled physically. There may be times when they're providentially hindered. But they'll want to be with God's people, and they'll want to be in the house of God. If they don't have that want to, they don't have God in their hearts. Now you can mark that down. 
And you have people, they just join everything that comes along and still just as empty as an old empty barrel and nothing on the inside. Now this man joined the swine's club. Swine is a type of so-called apostatized Christianity and dead religion. You'll find in 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 20 through 22, the Bible says, After you escape the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are getting entangled therein, overcome. The latter end is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them had they not known the way of righteousness, and after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandments to live it unto them. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to a watering in the mire again. And so we see here that this hog, the swine, is a type of apostatized so-called religion. When I read this story, I always think about Dr. Robert G. Lee, the late man of God, great artist, great preacher, on his way one Saturday afternoon to uh, go spend overnight with his members to preach to him on Sunday and had car trouble. And one of the neighbors invited him in to spend the night with him and he went into this mountain home. There in that house had chickens, hogs and cats and dogs coming and going through the house at will. And they sat down at the table, old-fashioned table, old-fashioned bench. And Dr. Lee was eating his supper and Low pig kept rooting against his leg, and he'd push him away, and he'd come back, root again, he'd push him away. And Dr. Lee said to the man in the house, he said, you know, said, uh, this pig's worried me down here, rooting my leg, said he doesn't like me or something. The man in the house said, the preacher, it's not that he doesn't like you, he just knows you're eating out of his bowl. And so a lot of times you eat out of the bowl that the swine doth eat, and that's not going to satisfy you. You need to realize that a swine in the Bible is symbolic of apostatized, dead ecclesiastical religion without God. And the land is filled with it today. I remind these two dear black fellers, they went out and they was going to steal them a hog. And they did. They stole a big black hog and it was at night. They was on the way in with it and news had gotten out. There's been a lot of stealing in that community. And so the state troopers saw him and began to flash the lights. They knew he was going to be pulled over. They wondered, what in the world are we going to do? we got this hog here. We don't know what to do. So they decided they just set him in the middle of them there in the front seat and put a hat on him and put a pair of glasses on the old hog. That they did, and the trooper pulled him over. He looked in there, and he saw the men on the other side. said, what's your name, buddy? He said, my name is Joe Jones. Said the men on the stern, well, what's your name? He said, my name is Jim Jones. He said, you're in the middle there, fellow. What's your name? He said, my name. He didn't, he didn't say my name. He just said, what? He said, uh, thank you. And so he said, drive on. And they drove on. He went on down to the patrol station and went in and shaken up. He said, fellas, I'm going to tell you what the truth. He said, I stopped a car down there a while ago. It had three fellas in it. And he said, that Aunt, Aunt Jones, that was the ugliest man I've ever laid my eyes on. And so when I read this story, I think about old Aunt and I think about Dr. Robert G. Lee. But a swine in the Bible is symbolic of apostatized religion and a Jew wouldn't eat swine meat. They refused it, they wouldn't eat it. And so uh, it was abomination sight of God. And so he joined the, order of the hogs down at the hog pit and, and of course uh, that didn't satisfy them. And then the Bible says in verse 17, he came to himself. He came to himself. Notice that. Verse 17. You'll never get a man to God until he comes to himself. He realizes his lost condition. You can talk to him. You can try to persuade him to sign a card, shake the preacher's hand, get him down to the altar. But until that person comes to himself and realizes he needs God, he'll never be saved. Now, after he feels a mighty famine, after he knows he's in a far country, and no man would give to him to help him, he came to himself. He thinks about the bread in the Father's house, and Jesus Christ is that bread of life. And back in the Father's house, he knew they had bread back there, and he knew at one time he was in the Father's house, but he left the Father's house and went the way of the world. 
I want to say today that's a picture of every lost sinner that's born into this world. He comes here a child of God by creation, not by spiritual birth. You're God's child by creation, but not by spiritual birth. You've got to be a God's child by spiritual birth to go to heaven. We all created, we all brought into this world. And so we belong to the family of Adam by a birth. But when we reach the age of accountability, we begin to wander away from the natural realm we should be walk, walking in or serving God in because we are lost, we are, we're dead in trespass, we're dead in sins rather, and we begin to trespass the law of God. And when you reach the age of accountability, you begin to leave God Almighty. You wander away from God. The Bible said they all turn their own way. There's none good, no, not one. That sinner, when he reaches that age, he begins to wander down the road of trespassing the law of God. Now he's already dead in sin and then now he's dead in trespasses and sins and he's only saved by the mercy of God until he reaches the age of accountability. Don't misunderstand me now. I believe all children are born into this world are safe until they reach the age of accountability. They're safe by the mercy of God. Jesus says, Seth, little children are coming to me and forbidden them out for such is the kingdom of heaven. And so you're safe until you reach that age of being accountable for what you do and what you know. And some children come to the age of accountability earlier than others. Some people are saved at the age of four and five and six and seven, eight, nine, ten. Some reach the age of accountability at 11 and 12. It depends on the child. It depends on his background. It depends on his knowledge. It depends on how he's been reared, whether or not he's been carried to church. It all depends on that as to how quick he come to the age of accountability. Late Dr. John R. Rice said he was brought to the age of accountability at the age of five. When he took something he should not have taken, his mother said, Son, you've stolen something. Or he lied to her. I believe he said he lied to her. And she, she said, Son, you have lied to me. And right then he realized the first time that he had done wrong and he needed to be saved. And so, beloved, whenever you reach that age, you need to come to God. Now this fellow here reached the point where he knew he needed to go to the father's house. He came to himself. He knew he was in a faraway country. No man could help him. No man would help him. He was desperate. And he said, I'm going to rise and go back to my father. I'm going to the father. See, you're God's by creation. You want away from God and then you come back to God by a birth, a spiritual birth of regeneration. And that's what happened to this one. That's the picture. See, Jesus is explaining here why he's vindicating himself for speaking to sinners and trying to show these Pharisees and scribes why he's doing it. So if you've never been born again and you've reached the age of accountability, you're lost and you need to repent and come to the Father that's bread in the Father's house. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. If you've never tasted or had a portion of that bread of drinking from the water, of the well of the water of life then you need to today and I wouldn't fool around about it I'd get right with God now because you never know when it may be too late reading the paper today I believe I heard on the news where a young boy about 16 years old killed in a car wreck I believe last night see you just don't know you don't know when you're going out to meet God and it pays to be ready thank you for listening well let's stand our feet father in heaven I pray today that you'll take the message and use it. Lord God, help the people that heard and listened today to know that we've given them what thus saith the Lord our God. Our Father, use the message. Use it to thy glory. May thy name be honored. And may Jesus be glorified. All we say and do. And we thank you, dear Lord, for what's accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Debbie's going to play for us. And while she's playing, if you're here without God, backslidden, want to join this church, if any reason God is moving you to come forward, right now is the time you need to respond. Would you come? How about it? How about it today if God is speaking?
looking for a church home? Do you need a church home? You need to come into fellowship with God. You need to get saved. Now's the time to do something about it.